this video we are going to see how we can edit an image from scratch to final so let's start with it firstly we are going to open today's folder and into this folder we see the property we have to open it now we are going to open raw image so all these images are from the same property let's open the first image which is of living room shot so as you can see clearly that it have a yellow color cast in it you can see now this is because of the yellow bulb on the ceiling as well as the table lamp so the overall black level need to be balanced properly you don't have to remove too much of black level for these kind of dark wall if we do so then we have to face cleaning issue it's because it is already very dark this is a dark color and if we try to remove the black blacks from it we can see lots of grains so it's better we just lit it lit up a little bit not much so whenever we have to see the right color of the wooden floor or like uh, other things other elements of this room then we always have to prefer the dark shot because in darker shot you can see the color properly in case if we have to if someone sees the lighter version in lighter version due to the over brightness uh, no one can justify the right color into it so it's better we should always prefer the darker shot to check the color and also the verticals of this image is not properly aligned like you can see the left and right vertical they are not looking very much vertical vertical straight enough so same with this shot same issues like which have discussed in the previous previous shot uh, the you know the the blacks on the right part is pretty high because uh, in the lighter bracketed shot even we can't see that much of brightness so it's better again we don't have to remove excess blacks from this area and we we should always try to you know light up the plants and we have to try to remove a bit of blacks and shadows from there because if we can't then the greenery we can we cannot see it we always have to apply some saturation to the plants so it give us a feel of like uh, you know it is it have some life in it so it's better we just put some saturation into greenery and wherever we see in internal spot you know whenever we remove the the blacks and shadows uh, you know from this part we don't have to apply this adjustment too much if we apply it in excess we may have to deal with grains at the later stage like i discussed in the previous one so let's see the next image this this is also the same image with different angle so again it have that same issues in it but the main issue which i see in this one is that uh, this is the uh, staircase area and whenever we have these kind of images we always have to put some you know brightness to this kind of uh, secondary areas because uh, uh, because there is uh, you know in secondary areas we see very less kind of uh, light source and uh, so we have to brighten it accordingly but there is one more thing we have to think about like we are going to do some color cast into the into this area and we try to remove and make it exactly the same copy of this one this is uh, not going to be good because if we do so we may lose the you know the natural thing from it so it's better we adjust in uh, adjust this area in that way so it looks a bit natural we we supposed to uh, put back some yellow into this one instead of removing all yellows so we can you know uh, maintain the depth into it that's the same issues like the previous one coming to the other image this is the dining area 
of the same property, this doesn't have excess color cast in it. It is easy to understand that what color these wall holds. We don't have to get 100% of the window detail over here, like this is dark shot. So, yeah, we don't have to get 100% of detail over here. Because if we do so, then at the end, our image look may look too HDR. It will look artificial. So to preserve the natural thing in the windows, we always have to make it less darkened. So it will look as natural like so. We have to add saturation to the external area. Here, the blacks on the left objects need to be reduced in order to manage a balanced lighting. Same with this image, the only thing which we have to do more is light balancing. As we can see that the kitchen area has less brightness as compared to the outer area. So this need to be balanced. This, you can see in the darker shot that how much brightness is coming through in, in this area and how much in there. So this is lighter version, we see too much of bright over here, but again this is a bit dark. So we have to manage the brightness in order to balance everything in this image. So before starting with the editing process, we have to check the style guide reference images. So I've already imported one image from the style guide reference folder. You can see the same kind of theme we have to apply onto the image which are going to edit. And this one you can see the colors are muted enough. It have a good contrast. You can see the window, it is not looking to HDR. I haven't brought up 100% of detail of the window view. Now it is looking the external is a loud light source. The wooden color you can see. There's no sign of vibrant color. Looks pretty natural. The brightness is too good. You can see some areas have shadows in it. I have left that shadow to maintain the depth in the image. You can see there is no sign of detail loss in this image. So this is the same way we have to edit our image. So let's start with the process of editing now. Step 1. Importing images to Lightroom. For this we have to open today's folder and go to the raw images. To import all these images you have to click Ctrl A then drag and drop it onto the Lightroom icon. But this thing works only on Windows 10 and below that version. For Windows 11, you have to select the image while, while dragging, press Alt Tab to go to Lightroom interface and drop it in the library panel and then click on import. Step 2 Stacking. To stack the image, you have to click any of the image, right click on it, go to stacking and auto stack by capture time. You have to select the, select it to the two seconds and stack it. So now you can see that it has been stacked together and it will show you a number two because these are the two bracketed shots of a single room. If it was three, then it will show you three over here. So step three is HDR merge. Right click of the right click on the stack image and go to photo merge and HDR. You can press Ctrl H as a shortcut to merge. So this is the HDR merge preview panel. Over here you can see that how the software have merged the images. These two settings need to be checked on because we want software to align it automatically and give the settings whichever is required like brightness, shadows, all the adjustment settings 
it applies automatically. So D goes among this thing you have to use always whenever you are doing external because this thing works only in an image which have some movement into it. Like you can see in externals that some cars are moving from point A to point B. Like in lighter shot it will be on point A and in darker shot it will be at point B. So when you are going to merge, merge the image without using this option you will see a ghost image. You will see half part, part of the card in front and and the half will on the backward so like it will be a ghost image also so for internals we always use none and externals whenever you see movement you have to use low medium high accordingly after you make the HDR you have to check even though in the internal also that to uh, check for the issues like patches on uh, some area patches and uh, some with the ghost so you always have to check your image properly before proceeding so in my image this is good to go so I'm just simply going to click on merge button now we can see our HDR with .dng format over here you can see this one so now as you can see that the corners are looking dark this have a pretty high intensity of yellow into it and maybe a bit of orange too we see color noise out here we see graining thing over here there are some purple lines which we which are known as chromatic aberration these all purple lines you can see over here on the edges of the curtain also over here this need to be removed they've got some loose and like chromatic aberration the green color the green edges the purple edges all these need to be removed we have to get some details out here into the windows and we have, to, we have to put some brightness out here into the into the into into the uh, staircase area. Some brightness need to be applied on the ceiling, and the right hand side have a bit of more blacks over here. But we will try to manage it. But we will also try that we don't remove all the blacks from this wall or from the black uh, marble over here because if we remove too much of blacks from it maybe we have to deal with the grains after that so it's better we have to uh, you know remove the blacks wisely into the images which have high contrast step 4 is lens correction now to do the adjustment we always have to go to develop more panel over here for lens correction we have to scroll down here we see the lens correction we have to check on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction when we click on it the software automatically tries to remove that chromatic aberration from the image like you can see that the green thing see if I switch on it the green and the purple is like automatically uh, getting removed and the enable profile correction is removing the vignetting effect from the image so it is quite bright now from the corner especially after doing the profile correction we have to go to do the alignment so we scroll down to the transform panel first thing is we always use auto most of the time auto things makes our images look perfect in terms of alignment but sometimes it doesn't so we have to do manual later on so we have to click on the auto first of all to see okay quite perfect now we have to check on to the constraint prompt if we have some areas with white borders it will remove it will chop off that white border so we click on the constraint prompt now step 5 
tonal adjustment. For tonal adjustment, we have to scroll up onto the basic panel. Here we have our tonal adjustment settings. Now, first thing is we we always have to reduce the vibrant saturation, make it zero. Like you can see, the vibrance is like fifteen because these all settings are already applied when we have made the HDR. At that time, we checked on the auto setting, and that have given these auto settings. Sometimes it is good, but sometimes it was not good. So we have to do manual adjustment over here. Now, uh, as we can see, lots of like blacks onto here, the dark area, blacks over here, black on the curtain, black over here. So we are going to balance the blacks. So here we have to move it toward the positive and remove the blacks accordingly. Some shadows maybe lift up the shadow and make this image looks a bit more bright highlights down to get some windows detail and some more details which has been which has been removed due to over brightness with the help of uh, shadows and black removal so i'm dropping down the highlight value also a bit of exposure down a little bit and a bit of contrast for depth slight blacks also slight shadows so this is good while doing these adjustments we also apply brush and masking in order to balance overall lighting so we can take the brush and increase a bit of exposure here and try to brighten up the dark area slightly over here the here we see the black so I'm applying a bit of brightness over here over here a little bit and a, and a bit of brightness over here too okay uh, to see the before and after window, you have to press Y. So by pressing Y, I can see before and after. So you know, while I was uh, I've applied brightness, it have changed a lot of color. Like you can see that after applying a bit of brightness and moving shadows and blacks, it have given me lots of like yellow out here. So this is what we have to remove in our next step. Step six is white and color balance to get the white balance done we have to click on the white balance selector tool and we always have to click on the white area to get the color cast but always try to see that you are clicking on the mid-tone like somewhere out here but to see the live result that what effect will be in your image when you click on the certain white area like you can see that this have high color cast so you can see live output over here that it is giving me a blue tone color cast if I am clicking on it so we have to click on the mid tone somewhere out here here click on it but after clicking on it you, you can see that over here it have given me a lot of blue color cast so we have to do a bit of manual correction over here because auto white balance is sometimes good sometimes not so it have given me something wrong so we can use a manual correction over here this is 4200 I can make it 43 we can increase 100 by 100 to see the result again why to see before and after window okay over here we can see lots of blues some greens on it and okay now 
step 7 is final touch-ups color and tone like you can see that here still we have lots of yellow and this side is a bit of blue so what we can do we can go downstairs in the HSL panel so it is known as hue saturation and luminance go to uh, here in the saturation you can see that the yellow is too much over here so what you can do you can slightly decrease the saturation of yellow so, uh, you don't have to do this much because if the, you are doing this much then maybe this light yellow over here may get removed so it's better you use it little less like I'm using slight over and go upward select the masking and from here add a new brush with temperature down and brush on the staircase area light tint okay. again add uh, press done first of all you know if you are not going to press done this is not going to get completed so you, every time you use the adjustment brush you have to click on done again click on it add new brush this time add a bit of temperature and tint a bit down a little less because I want some green due to the red over here and I want slight increase temperature apply it over here because this has a bit of more blue here also done press Y to see before and after ok this is quite good like you can see the color is way too better now step 8 maintaining consistency with same room images to maintain the consistency of colors we have to check the same room other shots which I have already done we can see it and check the colors like in this one you can see the colors are muted the brightness is ok there is not much yellow in this overall shot the color of the wood is, look, wood is looking good so we are going to put back same kind of color same kind of theme into that image so all these things can be done only in photoshop so we are going to export it so step 9 is exporting image with the right setting to export the image we have to click on the image right click on it to export and export then all these settings are supposed to be 100% quality and 300 resolution and we just have to export it step 10 is importing image in photoshop we have to go to the folder where we have exported the image here we have to click on it again drag press alt tab to go to photoshop and crop as you can see in this image that we have got a bit of noise onto the wall this we are going to remove this excess color over here which need to be managed we've got some we have to darken this area to get some details out here there's still some blue over here and onto the mat over here this need to be corrected we've got some strong greens onto the blacks because as I said that if we are going to remove excess you know uh, blacks and shadows from the dark area we are going to deal with grains so now we are going to remove all these grains here also we've got some grains and overall we have to manage the yellow color because uh, the image which i have showed which i have already done this, uh, all these images are the same in shot 
in that one you have already seen that the colors are a bit muted but in this one the color looks uh, too much vibrant so this is what we are going to uh, do so step 11 is adjustment so all these adjustments include brightness control light weight adjustment white balance color balance noise reduction sharpness so all these things need to be done so let's start with the brightness to get the brightness done over here we have to go to the adjustment panel and from here we can increase the brightness and close it we have to press control i onto the adjustment layer to invert it because black is always for to hide and we are going to use the white brush on it because white is always used to reveal the area so but always try that uh, the opacity is supposed to be 12 percent so to increase and decrease the brush size you have to use the brackets close and open this way you can able to increase and decrease the size of the brush so let's apply a bit of brightness i see this is dark a little bit of brightness i'm applying over there and over here like brightness looks good now let's go for light bleed okay we can't see any light bleed over here so we go to go to the next one next one is white balance to get the white balance done i'm going to create a duplicate of this background layer you can press ctrl j to duplicate it ctrl m to open curves Control and click on the midtone area. Click on it. Now we have picked the values. Red is 188, green is 183, and blue is 177. So by pressing Control 3, 4, 5, you can see Control 3 red, Control 4 green, Control 5 blue. So in this way, you, you, can, you may be able to switch to the red, green, blue channel uh, a bit fast. So uh, this is the highest value. I'm going to copy this one and paste it onto the both low values so all three are equal now 188 okay if i switch on and off you can see that the color cast is removing excess yellow now again i'm going to add a mask layer and got it you take a brush with 12 opacity because 12, 12 opacity is going, going to be going to affect little area with less patches. So I'm using 12% opacity. It was supposed to be 100 percent Smoothing is supposed to be zero always. Control E to merge all layers. Now we are going to do color balance. So to get the color balance done, we have to create a duplicate layer again. Drag and drop over here. So you can press Control G. For the filter, camera or filter. From here, I'm going to reduce a bit of vibrant to calm down the vibrant color. This much and press OK. Layer mask, control I to invert, brush, up 
apply over there where you think the color is too much vibrant I'm just trying to lower down the vibrant colors If I switch on and off, you can see that I have removed the excess vibrant color and try to match this one with the other images. Control A to merge. Now, noise reduction. So, to remove the noise, we are going to again duplicate the layer. Go to filter camera filter and from here you have to go downwards to the details you have to increase the noise reduction zoom in a bit to see the result like you can see that the noise is removing been removed press ok again add layer mask control i to invert take the brush by b and this time you can increase the opacity scale 60 or 50 maybe because these are the plain areas where we can simply apply it the walls is a plain area you can apply it even though 100 percent to remove the grains i'm using 100 percent of it So I have removed all the grains except from the wooden area because wooden is the texture area I don't want texture to be removed so I am not going to apply on it Control it to merge down and merge all layers Now we are going to apply the sharpness so to apply the sharpness we have to again take the copy and go to filter sharpen and sharp mask and setting would be 160 and radius 2 zoom in a bit to see the result okay. press ok now i don't want my sharpness to get applied overall so this one I'm going to add a layer mask, control I to invert, take the brush with opacity 20. Now apply it some areas where we think the sharpness is supposed to be added. I'm going to apply uh, onto the wood because I want sharpness to be applied onto the wood. Control E to merge. Now step 12, item removal. Let's check if we have something to remove. 
as I can see this room is clean so no need to remove anything so I'm simply going to move to the step 30 which is self QA now we are going to check that if we have left something out here so let's zoom in okay we've got some color distortion over here even over here so this is what I'm going to remove and we are going to slightly darken this area let's do it Control G to duplicate the layer go to filter camera or filter zoom in go down here downwards and open optics from here increase uh, the purple amount press ok inverse and take the brush and remove it control E to merge and control J control M to open curve go down this one and add layer mask control I to invert take the brush into opacity 12 and brush on the dark color wall so here okay, join up this color control E to merge now again we are going to check the consistency and match it with the other I am again opening the edited image and opening the other image to see and cross reference the thing that the colors is colors are looking this thing I am again going to open my Photoshop and I am going to check the color side by side so again if I see this image which I have done previously I think the color is still high onto my this version and I slightly have to apply a bit of brightness too so let's apply it so I am going to create the duplicate of this layer go to filter camera of filter and from here go to basic panel decrease a bit of temperature with slight thin and a bit of slight white and that's why again a bit of slight white and a bit of contrast slight shadows also and blacks also to remove the darkness in the image Press OK. Go back to the image to see. Okay. You can close enough, switch on and off to see what happened to this image. Okay. I'm going to leave this overall, but I'm going to remove the effect from the window. So I'm going to uh, again add the layer mask. This time I'm not going to invert it. And I'm going to take the black brush to hide this area. So I don't want my setting to be applied over here. So I'm using the black over here. And here we go, over here too. Again, cross check. Okay, control it too much. Control G to duplicate layer. Go to filter, camera filter. This time we are going to reduce a bit of color. Slight vibrance down with a bit of thin. And okay. Inverse, take the brush with opacity 20. And we are going to remove the excess color. Control E to merge. Again, check. Okay. Uh, 
and now we have matched the consistency this image is looking perfect now step 14 resize to resize the image we have to go to image image size and switch on the lock over here and try 2550 Will try 100 and 167. That's it. Now control S and save it. Thank you.